hello everybody welcome to my channel before starting my video if you didn't subscribe my channel yet please do and do not turn on notifications as i'm sharing every day great content for you all right guys let's continue with the a project folder and file structure i'm gonna open a new project and i'm going to show you um the structure and i do some explanations for you all right let's create a new project uh, we're going to create a ASP.NET Core Web application. All right, so make sure you select C Sharp. Make sure you select all platforms and web. Then you need to find MVC template. Here we go. ASP.NET Core Web App MVC. Select this one and next. All right, let's give a name. The solution name is going to be YouTube. ASP net core basics the project name will be um, ex explanations or let's say initial start initial start all right let's continue we're going to use dot net 8 let's create all right um i'm not gonna make this lesson too long i just i'm going to just explain you basic informations to start working with c sharp um and sp.no actually you you need to know the c sharp section because we already finalized those playlists all right this is overview let's close the overview section as you can see here is our solution name and here is our project name so let's start with the program cs file so it me what what why we have a program cs file is it a console application or is it a web application both of them this is both console and web application how do we understand that? let's open the program cs file as you can see we have same black screen and some code in it all right right click on an empty screen let's click the light bulb and convert to program in style if you remember our previous version of asp.net core we have private static void main method which is telling us this is a console application as you can see first we create a web application class and we're using create builder method and we add some services then we are creating our middlewares and we run the application the main logic in this um, dot net core logic the application create a console application first then create a web application on the console application that's how it's working so that's why asp.net core able to work for all platforms all right after the logic let's do some explanation here i'm going to go back again top level model where is the top level model must be here Oops. click oh my god couldn't click it yep top level model here we go all right as you can see there is uh, the application navigate us add services to the container so this is you can consider this section is our container okay and already one service is at which is at controller waves with waves so it means in this console application we add a service which is allows us to create an mvc project this is this is what it is all right let's open our section by the way i just start using these tools to make my lessons much more efficient okay let's type here let's add some text we add our services in this section 
Okay, how do we adding them? So basically, we are using this builder variable and we adding services dot a. Now we're going to see our built-in services. So if you would like to add a service, you can using you can use those built-in services. But if you would like to add a third party services, you have to use manage nuget package or another uh, actually you need to use a manage nuget package and add a dependency and you can add a new service to your container. All right, let's delete it for now. Let's go after adding our services. After adding our services, as you can see, um, we are building our web application. Then next uh, middleware comes. Let's clear this screen. Let's go here. As you can see, this section, this section. Let's clear again. Sorry. This section shows us our middleware. We going to I'm going to create another huge video for the uh, to explain the middleware for you guys. But all you need to know is after configuration has been done, so our request comes to the middleware, and step by step touch every middleware until uh, if we have an exception or we complete the, our life cycle request life cycle. So first of all, for example, we come to the use HTTP redirection, then static files, then routing, then authorization, which is we going to pass the authorization. If you add your controller some claim or role based authorization, you have to um, accomplish this section. If you couldn't, you're going to get an error message in this middleware and your application will be stopped over there. Actually, not going to be stopped, but you're going to get a message. For example, you don't have any permission like that. Then we're going to get our root section. I'm, I would like to talk about this root section. What is this routing situation? If you um, notice, all the websites have www, let's say argos.co.uk slash, I'm just making an example products all right slash let's say electronics or let's say products for example lcd yeah slash number six so what does that mean it means after the your domain name you have three different section on your query string this is what it is controller products action lcd for example id6 give me the lcds which has id number six it's telling us basically but you can change this section for example you can create your own pattern maybe you want your action name first then controller name then either so in this in this case your quiz thing will will change let's demonstrate again argos.co.uk slash lcd slash products slash six so you are defining your root your query strings according to your design pattern root pattern basically and I'm going to make another huge lesson about this routing to explain what it is, how we can manipulate, how we can control it. All right. All uh, you need to know is this is routing. This is middleware. These are really important. All right. Let's clear our screen. Let's hide this section. Let's continue with the app setting JSONs. So what is app setting JSONs? This is a file keep data JSON format. You can consider this is a kind of container keeps your 
um, static informations. Just imagine you are creating a project, all right? So you need to add some static information, but you're going to use a different places like a hundred times. Once this static information need to be changed, you have to change all those hundred different codes or you're going to give the reference from a setting JSONs and you're going to only need you need to do is only thing you need to do is change the information from here and your old codes will be updated. Okay, let's uh, let me show you some um, information. For example, I'm going to define um, let's say connection strings. All right, and this is going to be an SQL connection, right? And let's say something, something, something. All right, this is our, for example, connection string, okay? As you can see, we create a connection string and a SQL connection. So we able to reach this connection string from our classes using dependency injection, configuration, our configuration interfaces, and we going to able to take this data or you can take another um, information as well, like um, how can I say? For example, you are you need to make a request to an API, so you need to take your information uh, to ID or password information. You can keep them in upsetting JSON, and you can take them information to your co into your code. And once you need to change them all, all codes will be changed. I assume you going you understand this, but if you didn't understand, do not worry about it. You going I'm going to uh, show you while I'm typing the codes, and you will understand every detail about this section. All right, let's continue model controller model and weaves. But before that, I'm gonna let leave those three folders for the next lesson because um, these are really huge subjects so I need to go through step by step and slowly. Let's go through with the WW root. This section, this folder keeps our static files like our JavaScript files, like our CSS files or even you can store your images. Any type of file you can keep in WW root and we have a special in, um, interfaces to reach this folder and we able to reach these documents as well. All right. Properties. Just double click the properties and you will reach your document properties section. You will able to um, change any details about your project. For example, if you would like to switch from eight the seven or six, you can um, change your version of .NET Core from this section. Just, just an example, and every detail located here. I'm not gonna go step by step every detail. You can have a look when you create any project, and if you struggle something, you can ask me anytime you want, guys. All right, as you can see, we have a lot of uh, properties here. All right, I'm not gonna continue with the property section. Let's click. By the way, I forgot to tell you, app setting development JSON. So what does that mean? This is environment, we call it environment, guys. Uh, probably it's going to be at the end of this playlist, I'm going to teach you about environments. What are those? Development, um, staging, and production. So we able to manipulate our app setting JSON relating re regarding related our um, environment status. So we are coding right now, so we can tell confidently we are in development stage. So if I use this 
JSON instead of the main one, it will work because we are in development right now. If we have both development, production, and the staging JSON file, if you fill all of them and we try to use those JSON file, probably development JSON will be triggered because we are in development. Okay, don't worry about it again. We're going to go through all of them step by step. All right, let's continue where we left. This is our properties. And there is another property setting and then under the properties folder. This is the large settings. When you click this small arrow on the uh, run command on your screen, as you can see, you have HTTP, HTTPS, IIS, Express, and the other one. So you can, um, you can manipulate your launch settings for your application. And we're going to talk it about for future again. All you need to know is we can manipulate our launch settings from launch settings JSON under the properties folder. All right, dependencies. Guys, once you add a library, you will able to see all libraries, third party dependencies in this section. Um, is a meaningful name by the way, dependencies, dependencies because we going to have a dependency what we download from Nugget Package Manage. So that's why we call dependencies here. All right. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to finish this lesson here. Let me have a look. Is there anything should I tell you? We go through step by step everything before start um, before finish my lesson. Let's talk about a little bit controller module and weaves. Let's open all of them. Our previous lesson, if you remember, controller does the commanding. Once we receive the request, request come to our middleware and everything is accomplished perfectly. Our request come to the, our controller. All right, so controller select which method will be initialized then method will initialized according to the method um, how can i say uh, the role of method we can either go the model or we can go directly to the view it depends how, what kind of code we created then we're going to return a result to a view controller make the routing in the between the actions action does the job and return result to the way that's how it's working all right guys i'm going to finish this lesson here i hope this lesson will be meaningful to you for our future projects um next lesson let me have a look probably we're going to continue with the controllers uh, I think we're going to continue with the controllers. All right, take care of yourself. See you on next lesson. Bye bye, guys. Mm -hmm.